Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I will be introducing you to how to specify hypothetical components in Aspen Hysis. Hypothetical components are components that exist but their properties are not fully defined. Now, you will need to know how to specify them because you may require them in some of your modeling and simulations right so now you can specify them in the component lists section of the simulation basis manager using either the HiSys data banks or the aspen properties database now if you want to use the HiSys data banks you click on add here and then in the HiSys data banks environment you can specify your hypo components, right? There's a form here, select, use the drop down beside it, and then you'll find the hypothetical. Now, the hypothetical is for specifying hypothetical liquids or hypothetical gases, while the hypothetical solid is for specifying hypothetical solid components. Right. So, for example, if you want to specify a hypothetical liquid, you click on this. You click on hypothetical and this environment comes up where you can specify the hypothetical liquid or the hypothetical component. Now, before you start your specifications here, you might want to make some adjustments to the methods and the basis for which these hypothetical components will be specified right and you can do that in the in this simulation basis manager using the hypotheticals manager now in the simulation basis manager we are currently in home we are in the home ribbon at the moment and here we have a section called hypotheticals now here you have the hypotheticals manager which you can use to make some adjustments to the methods that HiSys will use to specify some of the hypothetical properties or the properties of some of the hypothetical components you'll be specifying. Now, if you want to make changes, you click on settings, right? So here you can specify the functional group of that particular hypo component you want to specify, right? The functional group, if it's hydrocarbon, if it's an inorganic compound the functional group right you can specify it here then also we have um you know for this hypo components right you would be expected to specify some of the properties of the hypo components while aspen isis will calculate the other properties that were unspecified right now these properties have methods that are used to evaluate or estimate them right each of the properties right they have their methods that are being used to determine their values right so for example this um critical temperature right the estimate the estimation methods can be found here using this drop down you have different estimation methods for critical temperature for example so you are expected to specify which of these methods you would like right but each of them are already in their default estimation methods but if you want to change you can easily change from here you can easily change them from here right before you go and specify your hypothetical components now when you are done with your settings you can click on the exit and then come back here to specify your hypothetical components now for hypothetical component specification that is for the hypothetical um, liquid or gas specification you have two methods you have create a batch of hypos and then create and edit hypos right so the create a batch of hypos is used when you want to create a group of hypos that are within a temperature range right 
a group of hypos within a temperature range. But if you want to create an individual hypo component, you make use of the create and edit hypos, right? So for the create a batch of hypos, you are expected to specify the temperature range, which of which you can do that using the by specifying the initial boiling point and the final boiling point. So that signifies the temperature range of the batch of hypos you want to specify. Then you are expected to specify either the number of hypos within that batch or the interval, the temperature interval of each of the hypos, the temperature interval between each of the hypos, right? Each of the hypo components, right? So now these are just default values that you have initial boiling point 30 degrees celsius final boiling point 900 degrees celsius then interval of 10 degrees celsius these are just um default values so when you want to specify your batch of hypos you are expected to um specify these values right then once you are done specifying them you click on generate hypos you click on generate hypos so the hypos are specified with their properties right for this particular batch the hypos are specified and then you can now highlight all and then add them to your component list right so you can do that with shift by clicking on the first then holding down shift and then clicking on the last okay let me see sorry about that nope hold shift yes okay so you click on the first hold down shift and then click on the last then you can now click on add so all the components all the hypo components that were generated for this particular batch are added to your component list. Now for um, when you want to specify individual hypo components or you want to specify your hypo components individually, your hypothetical components, you click on create and edit hypos, right? So this gives you the opportunity to specify your hypo components individually. Now, there are two um, methods you can use to specify individual hypo components. Either you use the base properties, which involves specifying some of the physical properties of the component while HISIS estimates the rest, or by using the vapor pressure properties of the component. So de depending on which whichever data you have right that will determine which of these methods you will use for your specification either the base properties or the vapor pressure now most people usually use the most people use the um base properties because it's easier to get such data for their hypo component specification now once you are done specifying the type, you click on new hypo, right? So here you are expected to specify some of these properties, right? And then HISIS will calculate the rest. Now you can specify as much as possible, depending on the amount of data you have about that particular component. You can specify as much as possible, right? But the list the list for the specification is either you specify only the normal boiling point or you specify at least the a combination of the molecular weight and liquid density right that's the list either you specify just the normal boiling point or you specify the molecular weight and the liquid density but as i said you can specify as much as you have right as much of these property values as you have right now for example if i want to specify this 
I could edit the name. I could edit the name and then for example I will specify just the just the normal boiling point, right? So once you are done specifying the properties that you have their data, you can now click on estimate unknown. Now, once you click on estimate unknown, Aspenisys calculates or estimates the rest of the properties that were unspecified previously. Now, once you are done with the estimation, you click on that particular hypo component and then you click on add so that it is automatically added to your component list right so that's how it works in the high seas data banks and this is for the hypothetical now for hypothetical solid you are expected to specify the molecular weight and the liquid density or the solid density in this case because it's a solid so you are expected to specify the molecular weight and the density before you are able to add it to the component list so for hypothetical solid all you need to do is to click on new solid right new solid then you specify the molecular weight and the liquid density right once you are done specifying those two you can now click on add and it is added to the component list. Now this is for the high seas data banks. For the Aspen properties database, you still have the same procedure, right? So for Aspen properties database, what you need to do is in this ad, use the scroll down button, the drop down button here and then click on aspen properties you click on aspen properties and this aspen properties environment comes up and you can specify your hypothetical components here so what you do is you use this drop down here and you click on hypothetical now this is where you can specify your hypo components either the batch or the um individual so depending on which one you want to use right but in this um aspen properties data banks you don't have the hypothetical solid here you just have hypothetical which signifies components that are either in liquid or gaseous form right so you don't have the hypothetical solid here right but the specification of the hypothetical whether for liquid or gas is the same is the same procedure as in the high seas data banks right the same procedure as in the high seas data banks your hypothetical manager is also here for you so in case you want to make some changes before you start specifying the components in the aspen properties data banks right so once you are done estimating you click on add and then it's added to your component list right so it's the same procedure as in the high seas data banks right so at this point we have come to the end of this particular video i hope you gain some knowledge you could try this out try creating hypo components and if you have questions you can drop them in the comment section then like this video Subscribe to this channel if you have not done so for future notifications. Thank you for joining me. Do have a good day.